Good evening, and welcome to the November 12th regular meeting of the Troy Planning Commission. Copies of the agenda for tonight's meeting are available at the entrance to the room. Additionally, the agendas and minutes of prior meetings are available on the city's website. The meeting will be conducted in accordance with the agenda as presented or amended by the Planning Commission. The roles and responsibilities of the Planning Commission are outlined on the reverse side of tonight's agenda. State law establishes planning commissions. The commission is comprised of nine members, all of whom have volunteered to serve. Members are appointed by the mayor and confirmed by city council. The other individuals seated at the table this evening are representatives of the city's planning department, the city's attorney's office, and the city's planning consultant, Carlisle Wortman and Associates, and a student representative from the Troy Schools. If you wish to address the Planning Commission, please come forward when recognized and provide your name and address on the sign-in sheet. Please begin your remarks by stating your name for the benefit of the commissioners. All remarks are to be addressed to the Planning Commission, not to anyone else in the room. At this time, I ask that all cell phones, Blackberries, PDAs, or any other devices that might disrupt this meeting, please be either silenced or uh, turned off. For items that are not public hearings, I will provide an opportunity for public comment. Uh, Kathy, the roll call, please. Mr. Edmonds. Here. Mr. Hudson? Here. Mr. Kempton? Mr. Crint? Here. Mr. Zanzika? Mr. Shepke? Here. Mr. Schultz? Here. Mr. Stratt? Here. Mr. Tagle? Here. Um, before we get into the agenda for item number two, I'd like to just take a moment uh, of silence for uh, Joel and Dale Garrett, who passed away recently in a, in a plane crash. Uh, after we do this, uh, we'll start the meeting. At our closing remarks, if any of the commissioners has any, have any comments or things they'd like to add, uh, we could do, the, do so at that time. All right, let's get started. Item number two, approval of the agenda. Yes, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Chairman, I move the agenda as prepared. Mr. Stratt seconds. Mr. Hudson? Yes. Mr. Krent? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Schultz? Yes. Mr. Stratt? Yes. Mr. Tagel? Yes. Mr. Edmonds? Yes. <clears throat> All right, item number Number three, approval of the October 22nd, 2013 minutes. Uh, do any discussion or motion? Mr. Edmonds? Move to approve as uh, printed or as published. I'll second. Mr. Krent seconds. Mr. Krent? Yes. Mr. Shepke? Yes. Mr. Schultz? Yes. Mr. Stratt? Yes. Mr. Tagle? Yes. Mr. Edmonds? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Hudson? Yes. <laughs> All right, item number four, public comments for items not on the current agenda. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to uh, state anything for items that are not on the agenda? All right, seeing no one, we'll move to item five, uh, preliminary site plan review, file number SP979A, proposed gallery of Troy, phase two, north side of Big Beaver, between Wilshire and I-75, I section 21, currently zoned BB, Big Beaver District. And Mr. Yeah. Carlyle, is that you? Yes, thank you. Um, this, um, as the chairman alluded to, is phase two of the Galleria project. If the planning commission remembers, phase one uh, is the parcel that fronts on Big Beaver itself, and that's uh, being currently under construction. Um, this portion of the development is located in the northeast corner of Big Beaver um, in Wilshire, and it's in the back portion by the Magna property. Um, the applicant is proposing two hotels, a four-story Hampton Inn and a five-story Hilton Garden Inn. Um, the property is zoned Big Beaver, which is the form based district, and the use is by right. This is the second review by the Planning Commission, um, and since that time, the applicant has made a few uh, small changes to the site plan, but for the most part, the site plan is consistent with what the Planning Commission first reviewed. Um, changes since the last review is the applicant has added a canopy above the patio and pool area of the Hampton Inn. This brings the building um, along Wilshire into compliance with the form based uh, code uh, build to line. Um, all other uh, all buildings on the site do comply with the form-based requirements and are within the zoning allowance. Um, the second significant change to the site plan is the, act, the applicant has removed the second access, or sorry, has added a second access points off Wilshire. Um, they have now removed the access that was being shared with Magna, so there are actually going to be two access to the development off of Wilshire. This has been reviewed by the engineering department, and they do not have any objections or concerns um, about that additional access point. 
Um, the third significant change um, is that the applicant has improved upon the pedestrian spine that links phase one and phase two. Uh, these improvements include additional landscaping, lighting, and benches. Um, the applicant has submitted a landscape plan. It does comply with all ordinance requirements, and they have submitted a phot photometric plan. The only issue we note with the photometric plan is that they need to confirm that all the building lighting um, and all the, all the other lights on the site are fully shielded and do comply with the um, ordinance requirements. In regards to design standards, there are design standards for, for uh, Big Beaver. Um, these include access, ground story activation, parking, landscaping, et cetera. They do meet all the design standards um, in the form-based district. So in um, summary, we do recommend approval contingent upon two issues. One is the applicant install pedestrian connection, um, connecting the pedestrian spine to the actual Hampton Inn front of it. There should be a pedestrian crossing across the parking area as well as the confirmation from the applicant that all building lights are fully shielded. Thank you. Yep. Any questions for Mr. Carlisle? Is the petitioner here? Convince the architect to show up. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Jim Butler with Professional Engineering. Address is 2430 Rochester Court, Suite 100, Troy, Michigan 48083. Um, don't have much to add to Mr. Carlisle's comments. I think he uh, did a fairly good job explaining the modifications that we've made since the last time that we were in front of you. Um, the lighting um, is intended to be fully shielded and uh, meet the requirements of the zoning ordinance. The only thing we would like to talk about is the additional connections that he's requesting. If uh, you could, Brent, bring up the site plan. Bear with me. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. It's a big file. Uh, there, if we can zoom in a bit on that, if it's possible. It's possible, just one. <laughs> Driving. Does that work? That'll work, I think. That'll probably get us where we need to go. If I understand Mr. Carlisle's comment, um, he is wanting us to add two walkways, two connections from the sidewalk that currently faces the plaza side, essentially where that ellipse drop-off area is. There is a walkway in front of there that's a seven-foot wide walkway. There are no exterior doors that come out of the building from that location. That would be helpful. Thank you. Mr. Hudson, can you see that okay? Uh, yeah, oh, it's better? Yeah, it's much better. <laughs> no, they can't see it. How far can I go? I'll move. Jim, that's all right. Move. Jim, that's right. I'll move. Okay. Right now, we have this walkway in front of the parking area. It all goes towards the central area that connects to the spine. There is no exterior doors. Essentially, everybody comes in the hotel through the lobby and exits through the lobby. I mean, there is an exit door here, an exit door here, and another entrance door here. I'm wondering the necessity of having additional two connection points at that location, because everybody would come through here and go out this way to use that spine. It's not a deal breaker, just wondered what the necessity really was of having that. If it's the inclination of the Planning Commission, I so be it. For the board? Yes, you can. I feel like I'm in court. This <laughs> <laughs> is not a deal breaker by any means. It's just um, we're always trying to provide for pedestrian connections and access. Our, uh, two thoughts. One is um, there's no easy connection now to get from the front of the hotel to the pedestrian spine. What we don't want to do is cross at this point because it's going to be a higher particular traffic area to stop when you're starting to run a car. In addition, if they add two act, two pedestrian crossings at this location, in this location you already have an echo bump out which shortens the distance that people have to cross across the drive. Mm -hmm. um, 
Third, second, third thing is a natural, if you are going, if you're staying in Hampton and you're going to go and have dinner down here, the natural information will be come up so they go right automatically towards your destination. That'll bring you down to this point and you're stuck. You have nowhere else to go to cross, to safely cross. So adding up another connection there just adds another avenue that you can cross to the safer point. That's our thought. Thank you. Mr. Schultz, a question for Mr. Carlisle. How many <coughs> trees is that going to cost us in the landscape plan? Two? Um, I'll have to look at the plan. It might, it, it might cost uh, a couple trees, but those can be relocated elsewhere within the green area of the site. I'm kind of a symmetry guy. Four. There's one in each of those nodes. Um, three, let's call it three for the sake of argument. We could probably move the one over. I think we could find a spot for three trees somewhere else. I'm sure there's an area on the site that could handle three th more trees. Yeah, there's an area. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Butler? I have a question for you, sure. uh, and it's more of an architectural question, but we'll test your architectural knowledge. The, uh, there was a new uh, an enclosure for the dumpsters um, kind of located at the west, excuse me, the north end right in there. Yes. Can you tell me what material is going to be used? Is it going to be a matching masonry material that's on the rest of the building? Yes, it is. Okay. See? It did just fine. I can handle that. <laughs> Any other questions? No? All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Schultz. Are you going to open it to the floor? Or? Um, yes, unless you have a question or cover. You I, I have a question for staff or the consultant, but if anyone wants to make a comment. All right. If, uh, again, this is not a public hearing, but if anyone is here that would like to make a comment, please come up to the microphone. All right. Seeing no one, let's get back on, Mr. Schultz. Looking at the resolution that's in front of us tonight, Item one says install a pedestrian crossing connection in front of the Hampton Inn, uh, okay, on both the north and south, and then confirm that the building lights are fully shielded. Did you say building lights are all lighting on the development? Well, the applicant, I, I was most concerned with the building lighting because the building lighting and the, the schedule of, um, the luminaire schedule did not include any notes about fully shielded, and that was just for the building lights, so that's what I was most concerned about. I'm ready for a resolution. Okay. Any other questions, comments by the commission? Yeah, I have. Yes, Mr. Stratt. I just have one. Uh, I have a little bit of concern as it relates to the access point. I'm looking at the drawing right now. And as pointed out, that you uh, you actually will turn to the right as you exit and go to the destination, the closest point to, let's say, the restaurant. Uh, it seems to me that the way that that access, if we're talking about that connection being between the two trees in the boulevard area, you're actually going backwards in order to go towards the, the point of destination as, as previously pointed out. So I, I think what we have to do is he's gonna have to modify that so that it actually is gonna go between a couple of the cars in order to maintain a 90, at least 90 degrees rather than going backwards towards the destination. So if, uh, I don't know, I, maybe I should have mentioned that uh, at the time that the presentation was being made. Uh, but I, I think if we're gonna do that, that's the only one I would recommend is that singular cross access point, in my opinion. Mr. Carlisle, do you, can you tell us uh, if they've got excess parking or if they're right at the uh, required parking? Uh, one second, I'll look. If I may, mm -hmm. I, I don't think I, you would necessarily have to lose any cars in order to accomplish that. I think that island is certainly large enough uh, that it could be reduced and moved over slightly. Again, I don't know what their reaction would be. 
Yes, Mr. Carlin. In terms of parking for this phase alone, they're right at the required parking amount. They're, they're not over, they're not less. Um, but looking at the two in total, there is some shared parking um, to be considered those because of different peak periods. There's different parking requirements for a restaurant use versus a hotel use. Mr. Stratton, my only concern would be I wouldn't want to get a car getting too close and backing out into that east-west drive lane if, if we were just to, you know, move that over, but. Well, they'll probably walk across the, uh, the, dry, the uh, road anyway. <clears throat> mm -hmm. <And> then <laughs> then why, why are you, yeah. A way to potentially solve that issue is to take. This space right here? Yeah. We'll go here. We do have some mm -hmm. slides. But get it more, like you said, instead of walking this way, turn mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, as long as as long as that'll fit in, and you don't feel the car will be backing out into that east or that east-west drive lane. Right. It'll it'll make it a little, I think, a better circulational pattern from that standpoint. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I think they're they're more than qualified to come up with a solution rather than us trying to resolve it. I'm I'm just expressing my concern about that. No, we appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Stratton. That's all I. All right. Any other? Yes, Mr. Schultz. Resolution. Sure. <laughs> Resolve the preliminary site plan approval for the proposed Galleria of Troy Face to north side of Big Beaver between Wilshire and I-75 in Section 21, currently zoned BB Big Beaver District, be granted subject to the following. One, install a pedestrian crossing connection from the sidewalk that runs in front of the Hampton Inn to the pedestrian spine both north and south of the host health's drop-off point and to confirm that all building lights are fully shielded. I have a second. Mr. Edmonds? Mr. Crint? Yes. Mr. Shepke? Yes. Mr. Schultz? Yes. Mr. Stratt? Yes. Mr. Tagle? Yes. Mr. Edmonds? Yes. Mr. Hudson? Yes. Congratulations. Be open by Valentine's Day? <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. All right, item number six. This is a preliminary site plan review file number SP989, proposed Holiday Inn, the northeast corner of Maple and Research Drive, Section 26, currently zoned GB General Business District. Mr. Carlisle, is that yes, you again? Yes, thank you. Um, the application before us is a request for a 130 room full service Holiday Inn. The parcel is located on Maple Road and Research Drive, just adjacent to I-75. Um, access to the development is going to be located off Research Drive and there is going to be no curb cut that is proposed on Maple Drive. The property is zoned GB General bis Business and the, uh, the use is a by right use. It simply needs site plan review. Um, the hotel is located um, in proximity in the middle of the site and has a full access circulation around the proposed building. Um, we do note that the site, uh, the site itself does include 116 parking spaces on the site and 129 parking spaces are going to be shared with the parcel just to the north. The applicant has provided a shared parking easement and agreement uh, that we have reviewed. Um, in all total, 245 parking spaces are provided um, and this does meet ordinance requirement. A hundred of those parking spaces are due to the in-house restaurant in slash bar that's located within, within the uh, hotel itself. Uh, the building meets all the height, setback, and bulk requirements of the GB district. I will note that in one section of the site plan uh, review, our review report, we noted 75 feet, but in actuality, the building is going to be 72.5 feet at its highest point. Um, our uh, most significant concern is in regard to pedestrian access and circulation. Um, our first concern is that there is no direct access, access point that connects the front of the building to the Maple Road sidewalk that currently exists. We note that because there is a bus stop that's located right in front of the building, so we should have some sort of connection uh, from the sidewalk to the front of the building. The second concern is that a majority of the parking is located um, in the adjacent parcel to the north, um, which obviously will be, will be used heavily when people have to um, park in that location. Um, and there's no direct pedestrian connection. Uh, they have to walk the drive aisles to get from that shared parking to the rear of the building. Um, in addition, the applicant should confirm that that rear access um, along the, ele the rear elevation will allow uh, guest entrance as well, because that's where the majority of the park people will be accessing the building from that shared parking location. 
Um, smaller issues are in regard to street trees. They need to add a, another street tree to research drive and again confirm that the building, uh, um, actually confirm that all site lighting does meet the fully shielded requirement. So in summary, we uh, support the project and we are uh, recommending preliminary approval conditioned upon uh, those issues that I have previously noted. Thank you. <clears throat> Questions for Mr. Carlisle? Seeing none, is a petitioner here? Would you like to step forward? Imagine my surprise. <laughs> Scott Bowers, Bowers and Associates Architects. Is there anything you'd like to add uh, to your presentation or to the presentation or any comments on Mr. Carlisle's report? Uh, yes, I'd like to comment on his report. Um, number one, there is a, a, a lobby in the rear of the building. Um, So it does have pedestrian access, or uh, entrance anyways. Um, it's right here. It's a dual sided uh, lobby. You can walk all the way through the building. We do also have an entrance over on this side for the, uh, the restaurant. Um, in terms of the um, pedestrian access back through there, there's an island in the back and um, we can put a uh, cut in a, uh, a crosswalk or a, a different material that would go across the walk. Um, our plan was always that people would drive back here, probably drop off, especially if they're parking here, they're attending a ballroom or uh, function or something like that. Uh, the majority of the parking for the hotel guests would be here. But um, I do see the importance for that uh, pedestrian access as well as the one going through the islands to the, uh, to Maple. And those concerns, I, I do concur, but okay. proper way to do it. All right. uh, we do have an elevation of the building. It's 72 feet to the highest point, which is the, the, the entranceway. The building's primarily masonry. It's done with uh, brick, um, cast stone, um, primarily cast stone, and a small amount of ephus up at the top. And it's uh, it definitely it, th this is the new um, Holiday Inn uh, look, which way they're going. For. All right. Thank you. Any questions for the petitioner? Were there, um, I-75 is behind it? It's right Just along to your this right side. Right, 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 right side, okay. So this is <clears throat> parallel with Okay, seven. so you have signage there too. Yes. Thank you. The entrance is kind of offset towards 75, so we get the most exposure that way. Sure. Yeah. Um, when I was out to the site, it, it looks like the site is really low. I don't know what it was before, but uh, was it? Restaurant. Oh, it was a restaurant. Stuart Anderson's originally. Okay. But uh, so you're going to be probably having to do quite a bit of fill there? Not necessarily. I don't believe we'll, we'll need to do a lot of fill. Okay. It is low in proximity to everything else that's there. The road. But, the road, yeah. yeah, right, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm hmm. Mr. Schultz. So this is using the same detention retention that was put in place for the original building that was put on site? That is correct. Mr. Schultz. Question for Mr. Carlisle. Uh, in the resolution, Item seven says add one deciduous tree. You said on research, can it go anywhere on the property or does it need to go on research drive? There's a minimum uh, tree uh, requirement along in the green belt along that street. So it specifically has to go on research drive. Okay, so the, I need to revise the resolution to say one deciduous tree on research drive? That's what the, yeah. the safest thing to do? Sure, yep. 
All right, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Any discussion? Or we're ready for a motion. Mr. Schultz. Resolve the preliminary site plan approval for the proposed Holiday Inn Northeast Corner of Maple Road and <coughs> Research Drive, Section 26, currently zoned GB, General Business District, be granted subject to the following. One, add a bike rack with a capacity of at least two bicycles. Two, incorporate a pedestrian connection from the front entrance of the building to Maple Road. Three, incorporate a pedestrian connection from the shared parking lot to the North Hotel entrance. Uh, four, confirm that the entrance along the northern, that, that the entrance along the northern elevation permits guest access. Five, confirm that all light fixtures are shielded or full cutoff. Six, all landscaping calcula add landscaping calculations to the plan. Seven, add one deciduous tree on research drive. And eight, show protective techniques on final site final landscape plan for those trees identified as preserved. Second. Second by Mr. Strand. <coughs> Mr. Shefke? Yes. Mr. Schultz? Yes. Mr. Stratt? Yes. Mr. Tagel? Yes. Mr. Edmonds? Yes. Mr. Hudson? Yes. Mr. Krent? Yes. Thank you, You're welcome. Good job. All right, item number seven, preliminary site condominium plan review. Propose Chatwell Estates, 15 units slash lots, north side of Waddles, west of Rochester, section 15, currently zoned R1C, one family residential district. Yes, um, thank you. Um, this is a 14 unit con site condominium project on the north side of Waddles, um, just west of Rochester Road. Uh, the property is zoned R1C. Um, the site in total is 4.9 acres and includes the combination of three separate parcels. Um, we do know that the setter parcel is approximately 3.5 acres in area. It has never been developed and does include uh, wetlands and is heavily wooded. Um, the two other lots as part of the proposed development have been improved with single family homes on each. Um, the site uh, in development will be uh, provided with a private road off of Waddles. Um, and the development does meet all area with setback um, provisions in the R1C zoning district. Engineering has reviewed the access um, to the proposed development and is recommending two significant improvements that need to be made. The first is to add a deceleration uh, lane on Waddles, and the second is to extend the center turn lane um, on Waddles as well. I have spoken to the applicant and they have agreed to this, these conditions. Um, in addition, uh, we do note some minor changes to the sidewalk proposed that need to be uh, made as part of the final site plan improvement. Uh, this includes making sure that the internal sidewalk extends to connect to the existing sidewalks on Waddles, um, and well as providing at least a two-foot setback for the sidewalk um, from the back of curb along the cul-de-sac as well. Um, as we noted, the site does include a large wetland. Uh, the applicant received a letter uh, from the state in, uh, of the, in this summer indicating that the, the wetland in question is not a regulated wetland by the state and so they are allowed to develop as, as shown. They will have to provide uh, the necessary stormwater to compensate uh, for the infill of that wetland. Um, we do note that the site is heavily wooded. The applicant did submit a tree survey. However, it appears from their landscape plan that there is going to be no trees preserved on site um, as part of the proposed development. Um, the applicant has shown a landscape plan, but we do note there are some deficiencies that need to be addressed as part of the final uh, submittal. Um, the applicant will need to add the landscape calculations to the plan. The applicant need, will, will need to provide four additional landscape trees on wattles. Uh, the applicant will need to diversify the, spe uh, the species that are being proposed. The applicant will need to provide a seed mix for the detention facility. Um, and the applicant will need to add more additional, I'm sorry, additional trees to the cul-de-sac to screen the cul-de-sac from the adjacent neighborhood just to the north. Um, with all that being said, we do recommend approval contingent upon the aforementioned issues being addressed as part of the final site plan approval. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Carlisle? Yeah, Mr. Crenn. Um, the existing sidewalk, the concrete sidewalk, kind of snakes around a bit. Is there, did I not read the drawings right? Is there, is there a plan to just straighten that thing out? Um, are you talking about the, drive, the sidewalk on Waddles? Sidewalk models? on Waddles, yes. Um, I believe the applicant's just going to keep the sidewalk on Waddles as is. I assume the, well, 
he's going to keep it as is. Any other questions for Mr. Carlisle? The petitioner like to step forward? Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Gentlemen, uh, my name is Fazal Khan. I'm the engineer for the project. Uh, I have Mr. Miniachi, who is the developer. And first of all, I'd like to apologize that my electronic prints did not have my seal on it. Mr. Strat, I know. <laughs> uh, uh, in the second submission, uh, in, in the hurry, we forgot to do that. Uh, the, originally, there were 15 uh, lots here, but uh, we decided to reduce them to 14 lots because of the three-car garage model they have they, to accommodate that in some of the lots. So, and we agree with all the uh, recommendations from the consultant, and we'll take care of all of those. Okay. Any questions? Oh, Mr. Savada. Yes. Just for the record, I want to clarify that the hard copies that were submitted, they were, the applicants required to provide two hard copies, they were sealed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Yeah. Yes, Mr. Stratt. Is Waddle Road, uh, is that a county or that's city road, right? That's a city road, yeah. Yeah, okay. I was just concerned as to uh, the configuration. I drove by there. I was trying to look at the de-accel and acceleration. It seems like it's widened already at that location, is that correct? Uh, it, it, it is widened, but I think we need to add like maybe seven or eight feet on the north side and uh, and a little bit on the south side to make it both bypass and that. And we, we did talk to the engineering, we we're gonna accommodate that. Okay, it seems like there's a lot there's a more. There's a lot more than what, yeah, what right. the two lane is, yeah, definitely. Mr. Shetke? <clears throat> yes, is there any kind of shielding uh, from the uh, the homes on Cyprus uh, uh, and also uh, the street abutting uh, on the uh, north side of the uh, development? Is there any kind of a shielding, especially where some of these houses come very close uh, on the side to the uh, property line? Is there any anything that, uh, or is this just going to be... Uh, pretty much open. It's just going to be pretty much open. We did not, I mean, nobody asked for it. Uh, nobody has questioned, and, and most of the homeowners are aware of this project because there has been some contact with them by the developer. So there never was any interest expressed in? Uh... No. Only, only thing is they wanted that uh, the trees along the cul-de-sac. Okay. So, because the headlights, they don't want the headlights to shine on their houses. Yeah, that's that's that when they when they came when they come around make that turn. Right. We might go, we might add more trees like. Mr. Yeah, Carlos. that would be a concern for the people on lot 30 and 31. Right. We we probably that's what he's asking. I think. Okay. To add more landscaping in there. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anything else? I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, with the amount of trees that are on that site and you're basically taking them all down and I see the trees that are required in the right of way, is there anything you can do to, to maybe screen the pond a little bit more from, from the road with some additional landscaping? Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Gentlemen, discussion, motion? That's Jim. Mr. Schultz. Brent. The resolution says 15 lots or units. It's supposed to say 14? Yeah, I, I prepared the resolution when we got the application the first time. I was being very efficient in doing it a while ago, <laughs> and my efficiency resulted in inefficiency. Efficient and optimistic. Yes. <laughs> yeah, my mistake. Yeah. Mr. Edmonds? I'm ready to offer a resolution. Proposed Chatwell Estates, 14 units or lots, north side of Waddles, west of Rochester, section 15, currently zoned R1C, one family residential district. Resolved that the preliminary site plan approval pursuant to article eight and section 10.02 of the zoning ordinance as requested for Chatwell Estates 
Site condominium, 15, 14 units or lots. North side of Waddles, west of Rochester, section 15. Currently zoned R1C, one family residential will be granted subject to the following. Install left turn passing lane. Number two, add deceleration lane on Waddles. Number three, connect the internal sidewalk to Waddles Road sidewalk. Four, offset the internal sidewalk from the back of curb around the cul-de-sac. And number five, provide an access drive to the detention pond. Number six, provide landscape calculations on landscape plan. Number seven, provide four additional street trees on Waddles and better distribute trees along Waddles Road. Diverse, uh, number eight, diversify variety of street trees. Number nine, provide the seed mix for the detention facility. Number 10, add additional evergreen trees to screen the entire cul-de-sac. And I think we should add the number 11 for the uh, additional screening of the uh, pond. Second. Second by Mr. Schultz. Simpson, can I ask a question? I Absolutely. The Absolutely. agenda was, anything pertaining to the agenda was further, well, before it's approved, can I ask a question? Certainly, come on forward, sir. State your name, please, and sign in. My name is Ryan Santini. I at, live at 4221 Renee Drive. I am lot seven. Yep. And I guess my question to the committee is, what is this retention pond going to do to the value of my property. I'm concerned about insects, animals, you know, resale value of my property, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the retention pond is a requirement. And, Got that. And I believe could, it, it's three or four feet deep. Uh, it's a dry retention pond. Uh, the only time the water will be when it rains and then it'll dry up completely. And I have I have a detention pond right behind my house, and 90% of the time it's dry. So uh, it doesn't. Uh, what's the bottom elevation compared to the edge elevation? It's about four feet. About four feet. Okay. So it's not it's not a wet pond. So you're not going to have. Well, I pond. understand that, but uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm asking maybe the planning consultant or the, the city attorney. Is there? Any concern I have as to my resale value? What lands, you know, am I gonna possibly look at flood insurance? I know the, the, the property is not being regulated by the, what is it, the state? Right. Or the, so, do I have a concern here? And I guess I'm asking, as a citizen of the, ci of the city, <coughs> uh, I'm concerned about my resale value. And like I said, I'm concerned about everything else. I mean, it, um, you know, I've already contacted the city once before, and I'm glad that you guys are coming in because it's taking these trees out. I'm still think, concerned oh, that a tree is going to fall on my uh, family room. It already happened to my neighbor uh, recently. Ben, would you like to comment uh, with regard to the? Uh, sure. The um, hopefully my questions made sense. They do. Um, the the first one is in terms of. Uh, flood insurance and stormwater, uh, this will go through a full engineering review with, for the engineering department to ensure that all stormwater on the site is managed on site and is not, is not a detriment to adjacent properties. Um, if you have specific concerns about stormwater management for the site, um, the engineering department would be the, the appropriate body to speak to and we can talk about after the meeting about how to get in touch with them. Resale value is a much more difficult question to answer. Um, it's based on many factors that are independent of this site moving forward. Um, I'm not a person, I'm not an expert on resale value and I really wouldn't even know how to approach whether or not this will lower your resale value if this is in, in, put installed. If I can interrupt, I do understand that. Sure. I, and I know you guys are not fortune tellers, I understand mm -hmm. that. But I also, I'm looking at to you folks as the planning committee, sort of, you know, to look out for a citizen that's been living in the city of Troy since 1986. And, you know, with the economy and the resale values the way they are already, I understand that the city has to look out for and need the revenue, but I also want to mm -hmm. protect the, that I'm going to be able to sell this house someday. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Stratt. You know, it seems to me that, and I'm not an expert either, 
and I, I really am not a realtor, but new homes being built right adjacent to yours should actually improve the value rather than deflate the value, uh, if you understand what I'm saying. Pardon me? If I wasn't a home right behind, next to the country. Well, I, I don't think that's a significant, uh, my personal opinion. I think you're far enough away. If you were number one, I believe it's number one, or I got to put my glass, but even that. No, the, the, no, number five. I mean, uh, seven. no, I want to, I want to, I think you're a ways away from it, but it really, uh, that, that's like, like he discussed, it, there's not going to be a fence around it. It's going to be just a swale that's going to be just open, and actually, it's, it's, it's an advantage to you. I, I want to clarify something. The, uh, the lot most adjacent to you is actually a residential lot that's lot 10. Um, the detention pond is located actually on Waddles, mm -hmm. um, which is not even near your. It's yeah. not adjacent to your property, well, so you're actually looking I, at the. I apologize because I was looking at the site map that you folks sent me, and the, at one time that the that, pond you, was, you're, you're correct. The first submittal that we received had a, had two retention ponds. One was located adjacent to your property. This is a revised submittal that shows a consolidated retention pond next to Waddles. Okay. Yeah. I can't correct it. That I did not know. Because I was going by the original plan. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Mr. I have one other question, perhaps, for the petitioner. Is this a site condo? Yes, sir. Okay. Is there an association going to take care of everything? Yes, sir. Would you explain that to him uh, so he understands? I was wondering where my paperwork looked. The association is going to take care of the, 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 uh, the retention pond as well. I, I, Mr. 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 Chair? Yes, Mr. Chair. I'm going not to, not to correct you, Mr. Strap, but I'm going to correct you. Um, the in fault, Mr. Khan, please step in. But the detention pond is going to be um, deeded to the city of Troy, and the city of Troy is going to be responsible for maintaining it. The engineering department would uh, like us to dedicate the pond to the city. Is there going to be a fence around it, too? No. No, it's not required because of the slope is going to be uh, one on six, so it's not going to be a safety hazard. Like you said, Mr. Stratton, it's going to essentially look like a swale. It's going to be whatever percentage, 99% of the time, it's going to be dry. It's going to look like a, like a grass field. I, if I lived in the area, I would make sure my association took care of it. Believe me, <laughs> I don't care. And I wouldn't rely on the city. <laughs> no, no pun. I'm sorry. I don't. Know. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Strat. <laughs> yeah, but I'm trying to give you reassurances. May I ask one more question? I, uh, the discussion was there would be no fence. No fence on the detention pond. So okay, okay. But what is these people? That on these condominiums, so I'm looking at lot, I can't see that part. Lot 10. No, lot, lot 10. So that'll be a condominium. Yeah. Th those people can just walk through to my property or ba back and forth. Uh, if we don't have fence yet. Do, do you have a fence now, sir? No, sir, because our subdivision doesn't allow it. Right. No. We don't. Our homeowners association doesn't allow this it. This homeowners association may not allow it out. We don't, we don't allow, we don't want to allow fences. It looks bad to everybody at the fence. Well, I'm also concerned about crime and safety, too. I, know. Well, I yeah. mean, the guys, expected value of these condominiums are going to be... Is over 350000 to 450000 Thank you. So, I'm done. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Be, sorry okay. to be a pest. <laughs> I can't remember. Did we have a second? Yes, we motion? have a second motion and a second, Mr. Chairman. All right. Any other discussion? Can't do the roll call, please. Mr. Shepke? Yes. Mr. Schultz? Yes. Mr. Stratt? Yes. Mr. Tagle? Yes. Mr. Edmonds? Yes. Mr. Hudson? Yes. Mr. Krent? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. John, I'm sorry. I'm just concerned. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, item number eight. Uh, you, you all were distributed a copy of the 2014 meeting schedule. Uh -huh. Any discussion on that? Questions? Mr. Krent. Uh, this is probably best addressed by the city clerk, but I, I, are we still having elections in February? Do you know? There's a potential election and uh, there's, there's the, there is the potential for an election on the 25th. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'm still doing it. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on the, do you need a motion to accept it or is it? Resolve to approve the proposed 2014 Planning Commission meeting schedule is prepared. You would like to say, Mr. Shepke second that. Mr. 
Mr. Schultz? Yes. Mr. Stratt? Yes. Mr. Tagle? Yes. Mr. Edmonds? Yes. Mr. Hudson? Yes. Mr. Krent? Yes. Mr. Shefke? Yes. All right, item nine, public comments. Seeing no one in the audience, we'll move to item number 10, planning commission comments. And Kathy, let's start with you tonight. I have none, thank you. Thank you. Frank? Nothing. Mr. Carlisle? No comment. Mr. Shefke? No comment. Mr. Schultz? Uh, my deepest sympathies to the Garrett family. No comment. Mr. Edmonds? No comment. We're moving along tonight. Joel Garrett was a business partner and a friend, mm. and I will miss him. Yeah, well, thank you. Two planning commission items of note that were considered by council and approved by council last night. One was the proposed revisions to the Kilmer PUD, the additional two units that was approved. And the second was the conditional rezoning for the, uh, the two hotels at, uh, on Stevenson Highway, just north of 14 Mile, also approved. Both. Both uh, were approved unanimously. Great, thank you. Yes. If I may, a, a PS, um, by way of information, we had a presentation probably two months ago on the Northfield project. Has there been any uh, update or any further information as to uh, his plans and whether we'll get a site plan? There's been nothing submitted. There's nothing I can add. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Matsney. Uh, no comments. Okay. Um, I would like to share a couple of <coughs> thoughts with you, or, or actually comments. Um, since our last meeting, I did have uh, a chance to talk with Dane Slater with regard to our joint meeting coming up with the City Council on November 26th. Um, and I, you know, specifically shared uh, some of the potential concerns that, that we may have that we talked about, uh, and really wanted to find out, you know, where the, where the idea was generated and what the <coughs> intent of council is for this meeting. And he said that he really was the one that started the, uh, the idea <coughs> up the, uh, to, to have this meeting. And really, he says what he's looking for is just to have better communications between the two groups. Um, we talked about a couple of, of examples where communication was arduous at best. One of them was the sober living facility. There's really no communication. We sent a package off to them. They looked at it, sent the package back to us. So what we'd, we'd like to really try to do, and I'm, I'm really in agreement with this, is that we'd like to have periodic meetings over the course of the year with city council. I would like to schedule them in a somewhat of a strategic manner so that, for example, if we're gonna be talking about items to update the master plan, that we have a meeting with city council prior to those, those talks so that we get their input and really just open some dialogue with them about that. Um, one of the other things too, I think that, and, and Dane agreed with this, we have an opportunity to help educate the, the council on what the planning commission really does. Because a lot of the, other than Wade and Dane to a lesser degree, they're all pretty new. They, they have not been on the council for a long time. So I think we have an opportunity to, to share with them really what we do and, and why we do it. Um, so with having, having said that, um, and we know, and I talked about the agenda, it's, a, it's an aggressive agenda for the 26th, uh, five items, I think it is. Um, um, there, there obviously, as we all know, there are a couple of hot, but, hot button items. The, uh, the silver living was one of them, and then the other five story um, storage building on, on Rochester Road. Um, so we'll definitely uh, have some discussion about that. Um, so uh, having, all, having said that and meeting with Dane, I think this is a very positive thing and I look forward to having multiple meetings throughout the course of the year and upcoming years with council so that we can have a better line of dialogue and communication so that we're sort of all pulling on the same end of the rope uh, as much as we can. So any other thoughts or comments? Otherwise we will. Uh... Just a mm -hmm. comment I'd like to make is that uh, a little over 10 years ago, I was appointed to replace a person, and that was uh, Pennington's uh, sister. So he does have some uh, insight, I think, on uh, also with the Planning Commission. So I was, a re I was his replace or her replacement. Thank you, Mr. Stratton. Anything else? All right, meeting adjourned.